in honor of football, I thought I'd tell a little funny joke here about both teams. Is that okay? Um, and in recognition of tonight, the first one's about the Seattle Seahawks. A Seattle Seahawks football player was bragging to a group of little girls that he finished a jigsaw puzzle in only three months. And one little girl said, three months? And you're proud of that? And the player looked down at the box and said, yep, because on the box it said it takes four to six years. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm through now. Well, we're going to do the Patriots. Oh, by the way, this is just in. This is breaking news about the Patriots. A Patriots football player uh, was almost killed yesterday in a tragic horseback riding accident. Uh, he fell from a horse and was nearly trampled to death. Mm. But luckily, the manager of the Walmart came out and unplugged the horse. Okay. How many have your Bibles with you? I want to go to, let's see, which way am I going here? There we go. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I'm not going to keep you very long. I always say that, don't I? Why is there a pacifier up here? Whose is it? It's yours. Now, Fonda. I won't even go there. I'm not even going to try that. Praise God. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 1, very familiar passage of Scripture. Thank you so much for being here today. It's good to smile in church, isn't it? Hebrews 11 and 1. I just want to take my text from. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance, someone say the substance, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to speak on the subject today, if I can get to it. Uh, this thing is having fun with me. Faith knows the final score. Faith knows the final score. Heavenly Father, we thank you. For the wonderful worship, we thank you for the wonderful presence of God that is in this house. We ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hand, to minister to your people. God, we believe in signs and wonders. We believe, God, in your powerful anointing. But, Father, we thank you that we back all of that up with our love that flows from Christ. So, God, let the people feel the baptism of love this morning in this house. I pray this community feel the baptism of your presence and your love in this area, Father. This is our Jerusalem. This is our Samaria. And we go out, Father, with love in Christ. Father, I pray today, let me say something that will impact and penetrate the hearts of your people to strengthen them, to lift them up. If there is one that does not know you, Father, I pray before they leave this place, they will make that decision to ask you to be their Lord and Savior. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church said... Now, faith is the substance. I want to read this in a couple of translations, translations in your hearing. Hebrews 11, 1 in the Good News translation says, To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. To be certain. Someone say to be certain. To be certain of the things we cannot see. The Amplified Greek says this, Now, faith is the substance or the assurance or the confirmation. It's the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things that we do not see and the conviction of the reality, meaning faith perceiving as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I like that. Faith is the title deed. Faith is something we cannot see. So the fundamental fact of existence is that this full assurance and trust in God is this faith. This is our firm foundation, amen? This is what we uh, have our foundation as far as the faith of God in our life. Faith is our handle. Say faith is our handle. Faith is our handle this morning of what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguishes heart believers. How many are heart believers today? And not just head believers. It's not just up here between your ears. It's in your heart. It sets us above the crowd because we're heart believers, not just head believers. Verse 3 says this in Hebrews 11. It says, by faith. Somebody say, by faith. We see the world called into existence by God's word. 
I mean, believe in God's word. And what we see created is by what we don't see. What we see created, again, is what we don't see. In other words, it's brought from the invisible to the visible realm. It's brought from the intangible to the tangible realm, to the five physical sense realm. Hallelujah. God has a way of doing that. The Bible said in Genesis 1, the seed plot of the Bible, God said and God saw. See, we need to take the word of God. See, it's, I'm not speaking something. This is where I separate myself from a lot of the Pentecostal and charismatic movement. We're not saying something to make it so. We're saying something because it's already so. Did you get that? If it's in the word of God, all I have to do is line myself up with the word of God and speak what God's already spoken. And God will back up his word. See, faith knows the final score. And all we have to do is speak what God has already spoken into existence. How many are you speaking what God spoke? And you say, well, I don't see an evidence yet. Well, continue to speak the word. Because you don't see it yet don't mean it's not there. Just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean that it's not already out there. It's already out there. God's already spoken it. But we bring it here to our three-dimensional world. Are you with me? Yeah, we're going to get deep today. I know it. Praise God. So let's, let's say, just for instance, tonight is the uh, football game. Let's say, for instance, that um, you had some friends coming over and the football game was going on tonight, but you had some friends coming over. They couldn't come tonight, but they're coming tomorrow night. So what you do is record the game for your friends. And you watch the game tonight. So you already know who wins. But when your, your friends come by and watch the game, how would you react during the game? I want you to keep that thought in mind. H how would you watch that game if you knew beforehand, oh, hallelujah, who won the game? See, faith knows the final score. Are you all with me? See, if you already knew what team had already won, how would you react? I mean, would you be distressed? I mean, if they fumbled the ball... You know, at halftime, or they fumbled the ball a couple of times. The team that you're pulling for, how would you react? Would you be biting your nails? Or would you sit there and rest in your faith? Can y'all get what I'm trying to say? I mean, how would you react if your team played poorly that first half? Or in the last half, they played poorly. But what I'm trying to say is that faith knows that final score. You should rest in your faith. You should have patience and rest. See, a lot of people take a Bible. They have Bibles on their coffee tables. They have Bibles, you know, everywhere. But sometimes I wonder, do they know who won the game? Okay, I can't get no help this morning. They, they don't know who won the game. They don't know what side, they don't know who the winning side is. But I'm telling you, if you've got a Bible, how many have a Bible? Let me see it. I don't believe it. Let me see your Bible this morning. If you've got a Bible today, you don't have a Bible, hold your friend's Bible up. If you don't have a Bible, I'm telling you, how do you know who, who won the game? Which team won? See, you, you wouldn't get nervous. You would know that there's a turnaround. Oh, hallelujah, on the way. You would know that something's getting ready to change, even though your friends may not see it, even though may, uh, your uh, working associates may not know it, even though the people in the community not know it, you know that there's a turnaround on the way. You need to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I know it may look bleak, and I know it may look bad, and I know it may look, look like it's, it's all in despair, but I'm telling you, there's a turnaround coming. I don't know how many you know today, but faith knows the final score. Faith knows where we're going, and if you got faith in God, not faith in your faith, but faith in a person. And his name is Jesus Christ. You know the end result. You know the final score. You know who wins the game. I'm telling you, saints, if you don't know, I'm going to steal my own thunder. We win. We win. See, you would become, not nervous, you would become excited. You know what we need? Church, excitement. Some of you woke up for the first time. Excitement, anticipation. Write this down somewhere. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. If you're not coming expecting, you're going to get exactly what you're expecting. Nothing. Well, praise God, don't shout me down. Praise the Lord. I said, if you come in expecting nothing, you're going to get exactly what you expected. 
But if you know who won, if you know who won the game, we win. If you know your Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, we should be excited. When people come in sick, we should say, praise God. And they're going to say, what kind of rock did you crawl out from under? Are y'all with me? If you see people lost and they're bound, you holler, praise God. Now explain to them why you're shouting. You're not shouting because of the problem. You're shouting in spite of the problem because you know the answer. You know who wins the game. Ah, praise God. Okay, let me move on. Let me have faith today. Expectant faith. Excited faith. Are you excited? I cannot tell if you're excited. Are you excited? I mean, help me somebody. Are you excited about being in church? We're not supposed to be like a bump, a bump on a log or a lump on a frog's back. We're supposed to be excited about our faith. And, and I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be a cheerleader up here, but if you've got something on the inside, it will come out on the outside. I'm telling you this morning that faith knows the final score, and I know who, who wins, and we're on the winning team. Glory to God. Praise God. If you don't like, I wear loud coats and I got a loud voice. I try to keep you awake one way or the other. All right, number one. Every believer should know that his team is already won. Who was his team? That's Jesus' team. That's Jesus' team. Let me ask you, are you on the right team? If you're biting your nails in the end of the, I mean, right here at the final quarter and you're biting your nails, we're in the last of the last day, and if you're biting your nails, you're on the wrong team. Okay, let me try that over here. I said if you're in the, you, you realize you're in the last of the last day and you're biting your nails, you're on the wrong team. Let me, let me help some people today. See, people always talk about the end time event. I'm a, I, I, God changed my theology about a year ago. See, I found out the end time's not just an event. The end time's a person. He said, I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. So whatever happens, happens, but I know who I'm in. If he's the beginning and the end, he's took care of the end time. Okay, all right. He's already took care of the final quarter. We know who wins. I'm not saying we sweep things under the rug. I'm saying that we walk out there. We're supposed to be salt and light. I didn't come to take cover. I come to take over in Jesus' name. I come to let people know about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to get excited anyway. Hallelujah. You might as well come on in here and help me. Every believer should know that his team. Man, I'm excited. I don't know if it's that three cups of coffee or it's anointing on me today. Every believer. How many are believers? See, the problem is we've been set in the church. We've got so much religion, we become unbelievers. We don't know what we believe, but we've been taught about what we don't believe. And you can sit in church and become an unbeliever. Oh, praise God. I don't know what we believe in, we knew what we didn't believe in. And I don't need to go down the list. We had more of unbelieving than we did believing. We need to have somebody teach us what we do believe in the Word of God. I'm going to tell you something. Religion stinks as far as I'm concerned. Religion holds the church back. And in this Bible Belt, we got a good dose of religion. <whistles> got too many Pharisees. Got too many Sadducees. Because they're sad, you see. <laughs> Don't have anything but religion. But how do you want real faith? I'm talking about true biblical faith that you know your team has won, that you know your team is going to pull out in the end. It may, they may, listen, we may fumble the ball a couple of times. We may drop the ball once or twice, but I'm telling you, we'll pick it back out. We will recover. Hallelujah. We're going to recover everything. I'm telling you, there's a restoration process going on right now in your community. There's a restoration. There is a recovering of everything that the devil is trying to stole. Good God. And I'm telling you, people are going to start coming back because they're going to hear about the excitement of being in the kingdom of God people are trying to find their answers in the, in the bottom of a bottle or at the end of a needle that's not where you're going to find the answer my friend where you're going to find the answer is in somebody named Jesus Christ how many know faith knows the final score every believer knows 
Everything now would be viewed in relation to the knowing that your team has already won. Simple message today, but I believe it drives home a point. The only thing that matters is how well you've heard. Watch out now, preacher. How well you've heard. I've been in church all my life. You ever heard that before? I didn't ask you how long you've been to church. I said, have you heard? And when I'm talking about hearing, I'm not just talking about just things on the side of your ears. I'm talking about hearing with the heart. Come on, pastor. Hey, Amen, that was a good point, preacher. I'll get how I'm on stuff. Praise God. See, the only thing that matters is how well you've heard and how trusted is the new source. Be quite frankly, I don't watch a lot of news because every time I look, they're talking about, I mean, the only thing they say good is good evening. Y'all miss that. In Jesus, I want to hear some good, somebody say good news. Can you trust your news source? And I could really talk about, I could go on a tangent here and talk about our media, that they have a way of persuading us to look a certain direction, a certain way. We need to start going back to the Bible and see what the Bible says on the subject. Everything depends on the news source. What is the news source? The good news. I would say a lot of times what we see is not necessarily real, but I'll leave that alone right now. Acts 27, 25 says, I believe God that it will turn out exactly as I've been told. That's what Paul said. Paul said this. He was talking about what God told him. See, we, we got to hear from God again. Amen? We got to hear from God. Can you all hear me okay? We've got to hear from God. Not from a church or denomination. Watch out, preacher. Or a... We need to hear from God. Mm. Y'all doing okay? So faith is determined by what we know prior to the event. I didn't say you won't drop the ball sometimes. I didn't say you wouldn't fumble the ball. I didn't say you wouldn't have problems. I'm saying problems should not have you. We are overcomers, not undertakers. What does undertakers operate in a funeral home? There's nothing worse than coming to church and feel like you're in a funeral home. Dead service, dead preacher, dead singing, dead, dead, dead. Well, go ahead and bury it then. We should be alive in Jesus. From the high chair to the rocking chair. Praise God. We should be alive with the fragrance and the fervor of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. It's not my faith. It's his faith. It's faith in a person. And I will teach on Hebrews 11 faith and going to Hebrews 12 faith. There is a difference. We'll talk about it in the Bible study, but we need to have faith, amen? Better yet, faith needs to have us. See, if you listen to something and you get a hold of it, see, when you get a hold of something, after a while, it'll get a hold of you. It'll change you. It'll cause a paradigm shift in you. Number two. Let me read this one slowly so we can get this. If we know no more than anybody else before the game, then we are the same as everybody else during the game. I'm using the analogy of this football game to the game of life. I really get concerned about uh, believers, quote, unquote, because they say they believe, yet they're playing on the other team. <laughs> Does everybody get my drift here? That we're playing, we're saying we're believers, but yet, and the Bible says so. I love this one. Yeah, I know, Pastor, the Bible says this, but... Don't you just love that? I know the Bible says but. Why do we have to put a but in there? The Bible said heal the sick. But? But what? The 
The Bible says I'm born again. Why? I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. But, but pastor, I've just been having problems. Wait a minute now, did you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart? How many believe in salvation in here? That's what my Bible tells me. If I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, well, pastor, I've been, I've been watching that guy's confess with my mouth and believe in his heart, and he's having problems, and you're not? Hello? You're telling me you go in the dark? Hello? You're telling me you don't have skeletons in the closet? And you're over there um, bashing this person? You know, we have people come in. Oh, boy, let me get out here on a limb. Help me, Holy Ghost. We're getting out here. We got people that's going to come in our church. Hang on to your hats. We're going to have people that come into our church. We better be careful what we say to them. Thank you for that amen. I said we better be careful what we say to them because they may not look like us, act like us, walk like us, talk like us, smell like us. And if they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, man, I can't even buy an amen out here. Are y'all listening? I got too much camp meeting speaker in me, I guess. If they say they confess with me, I believe in their heart, we should love them in. Don't come to me and say, Pastor, they're still doing these things. They're still having trouble. Well, aren't you having some trouble? Aren't you still dealing with issues? What I'm trying to say, I'm trying to knock in the head that religious, I mean, that self-righteous, judgmental spirit that has crept into the churches of America. That Pharisee, that Jezebel spirit. God, don't get me on this now. God, I'm telling you. They stand at the door and they measure people when they come. Let me tell you something. You don't have a measuring stick. Jesus is my measuring rule. He is my measuring stick. And if God saves me, hallelujah, I'm saved. I'm trying to behave. I know we got visitors, but I'm going to just act out anyway. Praise God. I get so tired of that self-righteous spirit trying to keep people. That's the reason churches won't grow. We, we say, well, bless God, look at them. Who do they think they are? They said, well, that person, they, they're smoking dope. They're living with somebody. Well, honey, where are they going to go if they can't come to church? Ooh, it's getting on my back doorstep too. It's getting hot up in here. <laughs> getting hot up in here. If they can't come to church, where are they going to go? Are y'all thinking? I know y'all think because y'all smoking up the room. Praise God. If they can't come here, they don't have anywhere they can go. And I'm not just talking about Thomasville Assembly. I'm talking about the church at large. We wonder why the church won't grow. But we need to know our, our team has won. And when you have a rest assurance, a faith that your team has won, you can go out with full confidence talking to people. Now, they may not see it yet. They may not understand it yet. But I'm telling you, they are welcome. I'm worried there, I'm worried. Let me try that again. I said, they're welcome. Tattoos, pink hair, ear gauges. Boy, y'all getting nervous. They said, what have we got in this church now? Because they need to hear the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that's going to break the sin cycle. And let me help us Christians too. The gospel is the only thing that's going to break the sin cycle in our lives. Oh, pfft, pfft, pastor, I'm, I'm living holy. Yeah, I can see your, your wings sprouting out right now. Amen. Your halo is so bright, I'm going to put my sunglasses on. See, we talk about holiness. We don't understand what holiness is. It's his holiness, not my holiness. Did y'all get that? It's his holiness, not my holiness. Because if it's your holiness, Jesus would never went to the cross. Y'all doing Okay. Y'all making me nervous. It's too quiet in here for me. Praise God. So we cannot be the same during the game. We cannot be the same. But that's how a lot of Christians look, don't they? Oh my goodness, what's going on? <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. Hallelujah. We do this. Somebody said one time, faith begins where the will of God is known. Man, I'm not even on point to it, but hurry up. Faith begins where the will of God is known. How I many know his word is his will? I don't know what the will of God is for me, Pastor. Read the word. His word is his will. Amen? 
If you want to know what God's thinking about you, pick up the Bible. Blow the dust off. Start reading that word. I'm a word preacher. Because I believe if you get into the word, the word will get into you. Amen? So again, true faith knows beforehand what will happen. Faith is a pre-knowledge. Still talking about the game of life. Faith is a pre-knowledge of the coming victory. Mm, mm, mm. Somebody asked me why I stomp my foot. When I stomp my foot, I want you to get it. <laughs> and this knowledge gives us peace, supernatural peace. I call it faith rest. Full assurance that God has already won the game. God's already defeated. The, we're waiting for God to defeat the devil. He's already whipped him. He knocked him out in the first round. Hello, somebody. At the cross of Calvary, he defeated the enemy. And we are law enforcement officers. We are Leos here. We just enforce the law that God's already put in place. Help me out, Fonda. Where is she? There she is. How many of you are Leo today? Law enforcement officers. We, we enforce what God has already put in place. We know who won. Right? So faith, in other words, faith is a result of God speaking through the word in our hearts. Simple message, but it still has an impact. I know it's no deep, heavy revs this morning, but how many can get what I'm saying? And when we hear the incoming, we'll know the outcoming. All right. So much more. So faith comes from hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing. Not just you heard, but you're hearing. Every day you hear. Not just on Sunday morning. Not just on Wednesday night. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing the word of God. I mean, just get your CD with the Bible on it. When you go to bed, put that thing on and listen to it. Your, your, your body's asleep, but your spirit's catching that word. You know that's true? building you up. I've heard of several people that were in the hospital that they were very sick, near death, and someone would bring a, a CD with scriptures on healing on it and plug it in, and day and night, that thing would play. Faith come by what? And miraculously, those people were healed. How many of the word of God is powerful? Somebody knew who won the game. Somebody knew. So if we had knowledge of God's will in every area of our life, we'd have that peace in every area of our life. What number are we on? Three? Y'all holding me up. Wait a minute, let me go back here. I don't want to go backwards. He said, please don't go backwards, Pastor. Amen. Faith, in other words, having it is not the same as using it. Y'all doing okay? This word that we heard is now a knowing that we must receive and not only Receive it, but act upon it. Y'all not doing much shouting. Y'all doing okay? We must act on the word of God. This okay? I mean, truth is truth. I don't care, you know, people say, well, that comes out of that camp, this camp, the other camp. Why can't we go camping together? I said, why can't we go camping together? Truth is truth. We must act on the word. If you say you are born again you'll start acting it, right? Does that make sense? You say, I'm born again. Because when you say you're born again, you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guess what's going to happen? The enemy comes immediately to steal that word out of your heart. And you said, well, I felt, see, that's the thing. We don't go by feelings. We go by faith. Well, I don't feel saved today. I never got up in the morning before uh, service and you didn't feel saved. Man, I'm, I must be on somebody's back doorstep this morning. We don't feel saved. Well, that's the problem. Quit feeling and start believing. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel saved. Have a couple of board meetings. You won't feel saved after that either. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pass the ammo. Glory to God. But we must remember that it's by faith, not by feelings. You remember that song, feelings, nothing more than feelings. Pentecostals love the feeling. When we're going to start having faith, the feeling will come 
They said, I don't feel like praising the Lord. Praise him anyway. I don't feel like raising my hand. Y'all not helping me today. Come on. I, I don't feel like it. Get out of the feeling. Get, on, get off the wrong team back on the right team. I will praise the Lord. Amen? Regardless how I feel. It's not about feelings. Tell somebody it's not about feelings. It's about faith. Just simple trust, belief in Jesus. In the word. Just acting upon it. We must act. Not just know it, we must act on it. I want to be very careful here. We can have all, we can have all kinds of teaching on faith and all kinds of teaching on things, of gifts of the Spirit, and we're going to start a school of the Spirit. I'm going to be teaching on prophecy. I'm going to be teaching on the gifts of the Spirit because when you teach it, faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Teach on healing. Teach on all these things. But it's one thing to hear it. Talk about soul winning. One thing to hear about soul winning is another thing to put some legs to it. Amen? To act on it. I like action. I like results. You want to get me frustrated in a, in a New York minute? Let me not see results. I'll scratch and start something else. Hallelujah. <laughs> James 1.22. I've got Bible. James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self or our own selves. We can get a lot of information. Hallelujah. I believe in that. I believe in that. And we're hearing, but we need to go out and do what we're hearing. I know it's not heavy, but this is truth. Amen? This is truth. We have to do the work. Somebody said, do the work. Oh, praise God. It's not the PowerPoint, it's the operator. Glory. So having faith is of no use to us if we don't use our faith. The word of salvation is fruitless if we don't act on it. The word of healing is fruitless. See, you know when it becomes a reality as far as healing? When you get the word of healing in your life, you'll say, sick people, I'm, I'm healed. Healed people don't lay in the bed. Say, folk, don't stay home. Praise God. I'm going to just go to church at home. I'm going to watch the electric church. Well, when you have, you, if you go to the electric church, you know what the electric church is? When you're watching the television? Ooh, I like that preacher on TV. Well, call him and see if he'll come pray for your baby when they're sick. Oh, hey, man. Man, y'all got, what happened to your smile? It turned her upside down. I, I don't need church. I can stay home watch the electric church, praise God. That televangelist, I mean, he's pulling people out of wheelchairs. You know what? It can happen right here if you believe it and act on it. I know what I'm talking about. We walk right into a pet shop. Man, been lame 15 years. I didn't have enough sense to grab him and pull him out of the wheelchair. And guess what? He walked. And pandemonium set in. Come on, give me North Carolina knot. Amen, Pastor. Hallelujah. You go ahead and do your thing. No, you go ahead and do your thing. I love people said, that's what we hired you for. That's your job. No, it's your job too. Is this, thing, is this, this is getting too real, isn't it? People wait for the pastor to lay hands on sick. People wait for the pastor to lead them to Christ. We have the same authority. Hello? We have the same anointing, the same power. Okay, I'm trying to move on. You've got that going home look. It's not time to go yet. Number four. We're on number four. How many know we're more than conquerors? So the more we understand and walk in this truth... And understand, the more we, are under, we will realize that we are more than conquerors through him that strengthens us. There is an identity crisis in the church. We don't know who we are in Christ. We've been told we are everything else but what the Bible says we are. I know I'm a child of God. And when I lay hands on sick, when they're not healed, it's not, it's not God's fault. I'm doing something that's not right. But guess what? Let me ask you a question. Let's just do this. Let's do a little training here. The first person you witness to, do they get saved or not saved? Just think in your mind. You don't have the answer. They get, they, if they did get saved, praise God. Did you quit on that first one? Or better yet, if you witness that person they didn't get, that did not get saved, did you stop They say, well, bless God, that don't work. I've been there. 
What do you do? You continue on. You're planting seeds. Some will fall by the wayside. Some will go on hard ground, thorny ground. Your mission and my mission is not to worry about what ground it falls on. Your mission and my mission is to continue to plant seed. That's the, that is the understanding of that parable. He said continue to plant. It's going to fall on hard ground. It's going to fall on thorny ground, on rocky ground. But it's still seed. Birds going to come by. See, your, your, your thing is not to complain about the seed getting eaten or the seed falling. Your, your thing, your mission is to continue to plant seed. And it's going to take root. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. That's Bible. Amen? See, we must get a revelation that we are a winner. Somebody say a winner. The Bible tells us that we win. That's all there is to it. Case closed. So let's go out and throw a victory party tonight. Let's have a victory party, not a victim party. We got to get this old oh, woe is me attitude out of the church. I like what Tommy said today. He was giving a testimony. A lot of people said they're going to give a testimony. They talk about the test and then we hear about the monies. Oh, you'll get that later. <laughs> Faith is a fact, but it's an act. We act on what we believe. When we hear it, then it's our responsibility. Here's the, here's the kicker. See, we, we say, yes, I've got to take it on myself. Responsibility is two words. It's our response to his ability. Does that help us? It's not what you're doing, it's what he's doing through you. Yes, it's my responsibility, but I respond to his ability. I'm just doing what the master told me to do. And the more we do the stuff, somebody said, just do the stuff. I thought about preaching on Nike today. You remember that Nike, that little commercial? Their motto was, just do it. <laughs> just do the stuff. If I preach too long, y'all looking like, oh my goodness. Just, tell somebody, just do the stuff. So it's not only just receiving it, is to bring it. It's to share it. It's to push it out there in the community. I will not be satisfied until this church is full. Not to build my kingdom, but his kingdom. Don't you tell me, well, you know, the first, I had to catch, I had to repent from my mouth. I said, my Lord, they've got more churches in this place I've ever seen. I had never seen so many. Everybody ought to be saved in Thomasville. But then when I began to realize how many people don't have it, you could take everybody in Thomasville and you cannot, listen, they would still be standing outside doors of every church in this area was full. Standing only. Well, pastor, we tried that, we done that. Don't you say that. I'm going to put some Holy Ghost soap in your mouth. Wash it out. Amen. Man, we've done that before. We're going to do something different. Amen. We're going to walk out with the power and the authority and the anointing of God. How many are going to be bold for Jesus? I'm closing. My plane's landing here. When you go out, when you meet people, the Spirit lays it on your heart, you meet people. That's the problem. A lot of people say, well, the Spirit hasn't spoken to me. The Spirit's speaking all the time. We just got to listen. <laughs> people said, I don't know. The Spirit's not talking. He's always talking. I'm just not listening. There's a hurting world. Tommy said, there's a hurting world out there, guys. When you see somebody that's lost and you know they're lost, go up to them and say, well, I want to ask you a question. Are you saved? No, don't, don't go that way. Don't do that. That's religious. Go up and say, look, there's only two kind of people I meet. That's what I was talking. Are you saved? They're going to look at you saved from what? A lot of people. Go up to them and say, there's only two kind of people I meet. The ones that are saved and the ones that are getting ready to get saved. Which one are you? And when I bat in their eyes, I'm going to, uh, 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 go ahead and lay hands on them. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. You've got to confuse the enemy. Now, I'm not talking about that person's the enemy, but the darkness is in their heart and over their life. 
is the enemy. Hit him while he's confused. See, I was taught in martial arts when, the, when you attack people, wait till they're off balance, then hit them. You get them off balance, they're trying to catch yourself. Pow! Hit them right then. You get the enemy off balance, lay it on. Get my karate chop right across the head, praise God. Smack him upside the head. Amen. Hit someone back head and say, y'all still awake? Praise God. Don't do that. Come on, stand up. Praise the Lord. Don't get anything. Yeah, I preached a long time today, too. We are more than conquerors through him. Not through the church, not through your pastor, but through him. Amen? We are more. You're not even a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You conquer the conquerors. Wow. Say that backwards. Wow. Say it upside down. Mom. Mom is a conqueror. Amen. <laughs> Don't miss that. I'm just going to leave you alone today. Faith knows the final score. How many are you coming tonight? Well, when you come, bring somebody with you. Bring somebody. I, bring, the, I bring the most vile, rot gut center you can find. Pastor, I can't bring them in here. Y'all, come on, help me. Where are they going to go? I, I'm afraid they may say something that's not right. Hey, before I was saved, come on. If we don't, Tony said this too, if we don't start loving on people and accepting them as they are. Jesus does the chain. We don't clean the fish. Amen. Okay. Y'all stand at me. It's time to stop, don't it? Never give the pastor coffee before I preach. And I've already had two and a half cups this morning. <laughs> if you have a need this morning, I want to call your attention to the altar. If you'd like to come pray, we'd like to pray with you. If the musicians will come quietly. How many believe that Jesus has won the game? That Jesus has got the M MVP award? He has the, M the most valuable player award. Jesus is the most valuable, not in your own strength, or your own power, your own performance. He's the most valuable player in this game. You must have him. And even better, he must have you. Hmm. How many are on that team today? How many are on that team? Jesus is, is in charge. Jesus is my quarterback. Praise God. So it doesn't matter if you're a Patriots fan or Seahawks fan. I want you to know God's team is the winning team. Brother, you need prayer this morning? Anybody else desire prayer? Whoever you are out here is having ringing in the ears. There's something called empathetic or sympathetic healing. Sometimes you actually feel, if you've been having ringing in the ears, just close your eyes and lift your hands to God. Some of us from medication, some problems. Let me believe God will take care of that right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have to slip out, please do so quietly. But we want you to know we love you in the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. Matter of fact, you may need to ask the doctor. Go back when you go back to the doctor and talk to him about it. But today I want you to meet Dr. Jesus. Say, Dr. Jesus. Come on, say, Dr. Jesus. He makes house calls. He doesn't charge, right? 
pray for Brother Ray and I'm going to come pray for Brother James over here. By the way, guys, I'm not against doctors, but there is a higher level of healing. Amen? I've seen people healed of blindness, deafness, scoliosis. I've seen one lady raised from the dead. So don't, you got to me too late. I know this works. Amen? You will begin to hear more testimonies and more testimonies and more testimonies. I'm prophesying and more testimonies. You'll begin to hear more about how God's operating through you as you step out in faith. Praise the Lord. All you have to do is step out. Don't worry about the results. You do your part. Here's a word. You do your part. God does His. You are His hands. You are His mouth. Brother, what would you need the Lord to do today for you? A slip disc. We're going to unslip it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. Where is it at, brother? Right here. Raise your hand, saints. The word says we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, we thank you for my brother today, Ray. We thank you, Lord, for the healing presence of Jesus. I thank you for that warmth I feel, God, going through my hands. Lord, we speak to those discs in Jesus' name. We speak to the nerves. We command the disc to go back into place. A complete and total restoration. In Jesus' name. Brother, your pain level is like from 1 to 10. What is it like? A, about a 7? Father, right now in Jesus' name, I believe the healing be made whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brother, try to bend over a little bit. Amen. Do you feel a difference? What is it now? Okay. It's getting there. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you right now. See, God's doing something, guys. It's good to ask somebody, you know, if they're especially in pain, what's your pain level? Ten being the highest, one being the lowest. It just gives you a gauge. Father, in Jesus' name, he said he's feeling a difference. But Lord, you are the healer, not me. You're the healer. But Lord, I know you're in me. And I thank you for the healing presence of Jesus right now. Oh, my brother, I thank you for his ministry here, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nerves, tissues, line up with the Word of God right now in Jesus' name. Brother Ray, try it again, brother. Try it again. Somebody say praise God. That's a little bit... I don't know if y'all understand what's going on. You feel a difference? You feel a difference now? feel a little different. You know why? Let me say something, guys. I tell people, we've seen a lot of people healed, but healing is a process as well. And some people go home and they get up. They don't even realize a lot of people get shot because a lot of people don't realize it starts healing in their, laying in their bed. That's a good time. Sleep is medicine, and God will continue to heal. But I believe as we lay hands on them, we impart something to that person. Do you believe Jesus is on the inside of you? And who's the healer? Jesus. Do like this, brother. Can you do a little bit of this? Could you do that before? Not too good? All right. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, continue the healing in his body. You said heal the sick, God. That was a commandment, not a suggestion. And I believe your word, Father, on my brother, that he be completely and totally healed from the top of his head to the end of his toes, Father. This is not a ritual, God. I really believe your word. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise. Brother Ray, God bless you, brother. We love you. Hallelujah. Let me say something. 
That's the thing. He acted on what he just heard. Amen? He acted on what he heard. That's the difference. If we learn to act on what we hear. Now let me say this while I'm talking about this. I know time's moving. If God heals you, and he will, it's not if, he's a, he is a willing God, not just a, he don't, it's not if God, but when he heals you, if you're on medication, go back to the doctor, let the doctor take you off the medication. Says for people with sugar, diabetes, and all these things, they know God's healed them, go back to the doctor and let the doctor check you out. Is that wisdom? Amen. Hallelujah. How many like to see the gospel, not just hear about it? I love to pray for the sick. Why? It's part of the commission. There's nothing worse than getting a stuffy sermon with stuffy saints in a stuffy church and go home stuffy. Amen. If you're hurting today, if you're sick, you need to be, let us come pray with you. We're not taking the place of the doctor, but there's a higher law. There's a higher anointing, right? Brother James, we believe God is healing you. Woo, I felt something. <laughs> We believe God is healing you today in your body, in your back, in Jesus' name. Lord, reanimate those kidneys today. A creative miracle in his body. Father, he's acting on the word today. He's come up before the people of God and we just extend our faith in Jesus' name. James, can you stand up, brother, just for a moment? You need strength? Okay, well, we're going to pray for that too. Father, you just express what he needs. He needs to uh, be able to breathe. He needs strength. So let's pray that way too. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak to the breathing, the lungs. In Jesus' name right now, we believe, Father, that you're penetrating these lungs. Lungs, we speak to you now. We speak to these lungs in Jesus' name to function properly we pray strength into his body, into every cell, every muscle, every fiber. In Jesus' precious name, strength, God, is our prayer today. Strength. Somebody say strength. Take a breath, brother. Feel better? You feel better. Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise God. You feel strength coming to your body as the oxygen gets into your body, into your cells? Amen. Somebody say praise God. He said it feels a little better here. We just stand on God's word. Praise God. Stand on God's word. James, I'm believing God's word on your body. God's word on your body. All your organs. God has body parts in heaven. You know that. He created these bodies. And I believe God will take them out of the body part warehouse and put them back in you. Amen? Amen. If God can, I've seen people, God recreate hearts and all kinds of organs. He's God, isn't he? Father, I thank you for that healing presence. I call upon that healing presence in him, Lord. He's a believer, Father. A man of God. Brother, just let that word come forth out of your mouth. The word of God. I believe you're going to lay hands on other people, speaking words to other people. Words of healing, words of life. You and your wife both. We love you guys. We just surround you with our faith and love. You are valuable in the kingdom of God. We give you praise for the man of God and woman of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. James, we love you, brother. We love you, my friend. God bless you. Come on up. Amen. You're a big old guy. I told him I was going to use him as my security in church. Give him a hand clap as he's going back today. Like you're walking better. Praise God. Anybody else today need prayer? I know we're moving a little longer. Praise God. This is the only time I've got you. Anybody else need prayer? Don't catch me at the back of the church and say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. And I'm going to pop you right in the back of the head. No, I'm just kidding. 
Hallelujah. Come on, Brother Tim. I'm going to tell you, this, this young man can play those drums, can he? Can he play those drums for the Lord? He makes a joyful noise. What would you have the Lord do for you today, Tim? Bone spurs. Can you sit down for a minute? Which foot is it? I'm going to anoint you. We're just going to put my hand on that bone spur today. Let me have that fit, brother. Which one is it? Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. The Bible said just lay hands on the sick. That's what I'm doing, just lay hands on the sick. I believe that healing presence just flows from one believer to another. In the name of Jesus, bone spur, hear me today. I command you to dissolve right now. In Jesus' name, pain, I command you to leave this body. Make an exodus out of this body right now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I believe it, Father. I believe something's happening, Tim. I believe something's happening right now. In Jesus' name. Tim, get up and walk around on Tim. You feel a difference? Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you tell a difference, brother? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Will somebody give God some praise? Amen. See, we're looking for the spectacular and we miss the supernatural. Woo! It's just simple. How many of you want the anointing in your life? How many of you want to know how to unplug the anointing? It's called one word, obedience. Obedience. When you obey, the anointing's there because Jesus is there, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is called Healing 101. When you pray for the people, I'm going to go ahead and I want to deputize some people this week. <laughs> when you go out and pray for people, ask them, how's your pain level? One to ten, ten being the highest, one being the lowest. And you'll be surprised. And guess what? They'll be surprised. The first, the first expression they're going to have is not joy. The first expression they're going to have is surprise or shock. Amen. And guess who else? A lot of times believers get shocked too. Take the weight off you. Put it, you do your part. God does his part. How many of you bring lost and sick to this church? How many of you bring the lost and the sick to this church? I, I hope every hand's raised. Come on, raise your hand. If you don't, I'm going to run back there and grab you. Glory to God. The lost and the sick. If we don't start exercising our faith, our faith will never grow. It's like a muscle. We need to exercise our faith. Exercise it. It's not mind over matter, but what's in your mind does matter. Renew your mind to the Word. Praise God. Y'all doing okay? Hallelujah. Well, I've been standing 40 minutes. I want you to stand at least 10. Praise God. All hearts and minds clear. All right, thank you. How many going to come back tonight? We're going to have some fun, food, and fellowship. As long as you believe the Seahawks are going to win, you can sit with the pastor. Just kidding. <laughs>